Over the past year or so, the Obama administration has claimed that its bombing campaign in Syria has been a success. However, it's no secret that ISIS has only gotten stronger, and they've somehow managed to take over and control lots of territory, about 35% of Syria. Well, that is until now, because the tide of the conflict in Syria seems to be turning fast. And that's because the Russians have stepped in, and they mean business. The infrastructure used to stage terror attacks in Syria and Iraq has been severely damaged. I mean, they are going in there with a large fleet of warplanes and helicopters, including armored Su-25 ground support fighter jets. They're dropping cluster bombs on terrorists and KAB-500 air bombs on these guys. And guess what? It's working. Intelligence reports show that the militants are in a total panic right now. Desertion has started in their ranks. I mean, it was just one Russian airstrike alone on Saturday that has over 600 militants abandoning their positions as they are trying to, well, they're running scared, all right, and they're trying to flee the country because the Russian Air Force is bombing the living daylights out of ISIS. The sound of the rocket was extremely frightening. Then a huge explosion happened in front of my eyes. I've never seen anything like it before in Talbisa. The scale was far worse than anything the Syrians have done. The destruction was huge and horrible. Buildings were destroyed completely and streets just disappeared under clouds of dust and rubble as the walls fell. So the question is, where the hell has the U.S. military been all this time? I mean, these Russian airstrikes have produced significant results in just a short amount of time that greatly surpass any effort achieved by the U.S.-led anti-ISIS coalition in over a year. It's an embarrassment, especially to the Obama administration, or at least it should be, because this whole incident has made Obama look rather pathetic. Well, what else is new? But I tell you what, more and more people are finally beginning to wake up and understand what is truly going on in Syria and what the real objective has been all along for the U.S. government and the military industrial complex. And that is that the Obama administration, well, I'll let you in on a little secret. They've never been interested in removing ISIS at all. In fact, it is the total opposite. ISIS is a Frankenstein created by Western intelligence to destabilize Syria in an effort to remove President Bashir al-Assad from power. And that's because the global banking cartels, well, they can't wait to get their greedy little paws on Syria's natural resources, specifically natural gas and its transit through the Middle East. They also want to control another very vitally important piece on the grand chessboard. And in the process, our government has armed, funded, and trained ISIS terrorists to, well, basically to do Washington's dirty work. I am concerned about this report about Syrian rebels and the ceasefire with ISIS. Uh, Senator but Paul, that's not true. It's, well, it's not true. Uh, it's you want not me to read true. From the, uh, Whether I don't care about the report. I know these people intimately. We talk to them all the time. Tutnova says people living in ISIS-controlled areas are in fear of the harsh penalties for infringement of the stringent laws. The Islamic State terror group has reportedly executed a hundred of its own foreign fighters who tried to flee their headquarters in the Syrian city of Raqqa. We're here in the 17th Division military base just outside the city of Raqqa. And we're here with the soldiers of Bashar. You can see them now digging their own graves in the very place where they were stationed. Can ISIS be defeated in this battle here? That's the big question mark. And if ISIS can't be defeated, having taken this fight now to back to ISIS, and if the Iraqi military is unsuccessful, then I think you have to look at a very different map in the Middle East. So look, there's no doubt that the U.S. government is responsible for the creation of ISIS. And the Obama White House, they say that they are only arming the so-called moderate rebels in Syria. 
But we know better than that. I mean, we've seen a whole trail of evidence throughout the entire country, like U.S. weapons airdrops that somehow magically, mysteriously, and accidentally keep ending up in the hands of ISIS, along with the, well, a whole bunch of Toyota pickup trucks. And this clearly demonstrates U.S. involvement and support. And of course, we also have declassified secret U.S. government documents that were obtained by the law firm Judicial Watch that shows that the U.S. deliberately allied with al-Qaeda and other Islamist extremist groups to take out Bashir al-Assad. So the evidence is there. And Russia isn't stupid. Vladimir Putin, he knows what's going on. And he's only openly and publicly declared that Obama has indeed armed ISIS. In fact, InfoWars crew member and Russian translator Daria, who works with us here at InfoWars, well, she translated a speech by Vladimir Putin that was, this was a speech before the Russian airstrikes in Syria, where he states that the U.S. armed ISIS and the Syrians that are fighting against Assad. Once again, proving what we've been saying here at InfoWars all along. Another threat that President Obama mentioned was ISIS. Well, who on earth armed them? Who helped to arm the Syrians that were fighting against Assad? Who created the necessary political climate that facilitated the situation? Who pushed for the delivery of arms to the area? Do you really not understand as to who is fighting in Syria? And make no mistake about it, the fact that the Russians are now involved, well, that is a game changer. Because obviously the Obama administration and the global banking cartels, well, they're not very happy with the idea of Russian airstrikes in Syria. And this is where it starts to get very dangerous because this is how the war starts to escalate. British defense officials have instructed fighter jet pilots to shoot down Russian jets over Syria. And U.S. Senator John McCain says he'd like to arm the Syrian rebels with weapons to shoot down the Russian Air Force. We need to have a no-fly zone. We need to have a buffer zone for refugees. We need to provide No, I, I know that, Senator, help. but they are attacking yeah. the very guys who we want to see topple aside. Uh, you you would let American that. planes just no. to, to pass them and let them do that? No, but I might do what we did in Afghanistan many years ago to give those guys the ability to shoot down those planes. That, uh, that equipment is available. Who would be shooting him down? The Free Syrian Army. Meanwhile, al Nusra forces, who are infamously known for being the real culprits behind the chemical attacks on Syrian civilians a few years ago, well, they just launched rocket strikes on the Russian embassy in Damascus. Rockets that were, well, more than likely supplied by U.S. forces. This is a buildup to a global conflict. Meanwhile, Zero Hedge is reporting that the commander of Iran's Quds Force, Qasim Soleimani, well, he violated a U.N. travel ban. He visited Russia and held meetings with the Kremlin. The Pentagon says those meetings were very important and helped accelerate the timetable for Russia's involvement in Syria. This looks like the biggest standoff between Russia and the United States since the Cold War. And don't expect Saudi Arabia and Israel to just stand there on the sidelines either, especially now that it looks like Iran wants to join the fight. Hundreds of Iranian forces have arrived in Syria in the last 10 days, and they will soon join the fight in a major ground offensive backed by Russian airstrikes. That's according to Reuters. So there is an emerging military alliance between Russia, the Syrian army, and its allies, Iran. And they are focused on recapturing the territories that were taken over by U.S.-sponsored ISIS. And now that the Russians appear to be succeeding in taking out radical militants inside Syria, well, we've just learned 
that the president of Iraq is considering asking the Russians to conduct a similar operation inside his own country. So now the Russians may very well end up launching airstrikes in Iraq soon. Wow. So there you have it. Call it what you like. To me, it looks like a preview of World War III. Globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. The key is to be aware of this attack and to fight back against it. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life.